Bellows House is in the suburb of Flinders. It's about one and a half hour drive from Melbourne. It's a holiday house for the family. From the get-go, we have this idea that this house should be a permanent structure. We want it to be permanent because that is something noble about creating things that last. The thinking behind when we start designing this place is the floor plan is orientated so that it provides some sort of privacy from the street itself. As a result, we carve out some internal courtyards inside these two walls. We have done quite a long facade with really articulated block work. We need to provide that privacy to the client. When the whole thing is curtained down or locked up, we call it a defense mechanism that provides the privacy to the client. This creates a dialogue, creates interest so that people can actually engage and talk about this house. The name is actually referring to the shape of the pyramid inside the house, which is similar to bellows of a camera lens. The concrete pyramid is a craft in itself. All the credit has to go to the builder, Gareth. Gareth laser cut everything to millimeter perfection. I remember when the day we stripped the formwork and that moment of joy when you actually see the result. Once an idea has germinated, I have a tendency to be quite obsessive. That pattern has replicated in kitchen bench top as well as external window shelves. To joinery handles, everything becomes a subsequent of that initial decision. I actually want to draw out the process of entering into a house where in traditional sense, you open the front door and that's where you start your experience. In this case, you actually have to travel through a path that designed intentionally and force you to experience the material and also the shape of the building before you even touch the front door. That is something that was done intentionally and designed to make you to explore the entire house slowly and appreciate what we have done. We have the pleasure of working with the landscape architect in this project, which is Jim Fogarty. Jim has a house in Flinders, so he actually understands the microclimate of Flinders quite well. We wanted the entire garden to be native, and Jim is great in creating layers within his landscape. The whole idea is to bring the inside out. The brick floor from within the house has extended externally and because of that, when you open up the bifold doors to the living area, that entire inside and outside boundary become quite blurry. We care a lot about how lights come inside a building. Quite often, the material choice is an extension of that. In this case, concrete is used internally to condition the light that will come inside the house. We have used a white concrete block internally as well as externally. Because of that, shadow cast onto the white block become quite significant and you can actually look at it as being part of the feature of the house. When you make the palette a little bit more constrained, you tend to explore the material even more. We have put in quite a robust and hard-wearing base structure and to balance that, we have used timber to soften the entire material palette. It's actually quite liberating because you have to use your creativity to find other ways to make it even more complex. I think because how the house is being constructed in terms of the material, you can actually be quite insulated internally where you don't actually hear the sound of the rain when it hit really hard, when it's pouring. But as soon as you open the door, that connection to the outside is apparent. You feel quite protected internally, but yet you can experience this external element. Shadow has a power to the feeling of a space. I always believe that light and shadow is part of architecture. If you design it from the get-go, you can control that mood that you want to portray internally. The shadow creates an environment where one can take respite in. The 
opposite of that is when there is light coming in, you can actually appreciate the light being something that brightens your days up. We like the use of either a highlight window or skylights, especially when we have a deep floor plate. It's always good to use the light to light up the scent of a house. The favourite part of the house is actually the drying rack for the wetsuit. The reason I said that is because it actually epitomizes an idea of a holiday house. It's where activities ended up at the end of the day. The drying rack is always there, wetsuit and boards are always there, and it just reminds you what this house is about. One thing that I am most happy to see is to see how the building is aged. Externally, we have used this white concrete block. However, in my mind, from the day when we begin to design, I actually want to see it age. Building will have dust over them, rain will create stain, but I think it's part of the natural beauty. I would like to think that Bellows House has created this dialogue about architecture or beach vernacular in a sense that it's not about one single hero image. It's about an experience as opposed to one single moment. In Bellows House, you don't get to describe the building in one go. You actually have to walk through the entry sequence to understand the house properly. Published three times a year, the local project hard copy publication contains over 350 pages of curated insight into the latest architecture and design across Australia and New Zealand. Printed on exceptionally high quality paper stock, the publication is designed to be read and enjoyed over time, a beautiful and valuable addition to any personal library or coffee table. Our latest issue, edition number six, contains 20 projects from Australia and New Zealand's leading architects and interior designers as well as stories on industry-leading and emerging furniture designers and local distributors. Discover the latest projects such as The Sandcastle by Luigi Rosselli, his son Raffaello Rosselli, and interior designer Romy Olwell. Corner House by Archer. Chenier by emerging studio East Top Architects. The award-winning Eight Yard House by Studio Bright and Pearl Beach House by Polly Harbison Design in collaboration with Arendt and Pike. With worldwide delivery available, have the hard copy print publication delivered straight to your door three times a year with an annual subscription. Head to the description of this video to subscribe to the tri-annual print publication. <laughs>